So we previously introduced the concepts of conditional probability and probability mass functions, and now we're going to try to put those two things together into what are called conditional PMFs. Right? So remember what our definition of a PMF was. It's the probability that a random variable takes on a certain value. Okay. And kind of if you think about what's going on in the underlying sample space, I've got, you know, a bunch of outcomes and all the outcomes in each of these kind of events in the partition will map to one value of the random variable. So it's kind of like saying, what's the probability that this event in the sample space occurred? Okay. And now we're going to condition on some new event C. I'm telling you, hey, you know, this new event C occurred. And I want to know how does that change or update the PMF from what it was before to what it is given this new information. So we can use the tools we already have to answer this question, right? The probability mass function conditioned on this new event is nothing more than, if I want to say it this way, it's the probability of AI given C, which we already know is the probability of the intersection over the probability of the whole thing, right? Basically, this is like normalizing the probabilities of each of the subclasses with respect to this C that occurred, okay? And of course, this has to have, you know, uh, the probability of this conditioning event to be not equal to zero for this to make sense. So let's do a concrete example to make this a little more specific, right? So let's suppose I want to know, I flip a coin five times, and I want to know what is the probability that I get um, you know, n heads given that I already saw at least two heads. Or a more mathy way of saying this is something like, I want to know what is the probability that the random variable equals n given that I know the random variable was at least equal to two. Okay. Well, let's think about the unnormalized, the normal PDF, this probability of getting n heads, and let's just say uh, in five flips, for example, to make this more concrete, right? So if I have five flips, I could have up to five heads. And assuming this is a fair coin, this is a binomial distribution, right? So I have a PDF, a PMF that looks something like this. And what are the heights of these arrows? You can figure it out that these are the binomial probabilities. Okay. So now I'm saying, okay, I'm telling you that X is at least equal to two. So in some sense, this is the event I'm conditioning on. What's the probability of that event? Well, I would just add up the corresponding values of the PMF. So I'd say the probability that X is greater than equal to two is, I can just read them off, right? It's 10 plus 10 plus five plus one is 26 over 32, okay? And now the conditional PMF is like rebalancing these probabilities, say, okay, I know this happened. Tell me how does the PMF shift? Well, these things can no longer happen. They have probability zero. And it's kind of like rebalancing the remaining probability mass inside of that box. So my new PMF looks like, well, the probability of getting zero is exactly zero. The probability of getting one is exactly zero because I know that those things can't occur. And now I take the 26 over 32 probability and I rearrange it so that's, that's like saying, okay, the probability, for example, that X equals two given that X was at least two is the probability that X equals two over the probability that X is at least equal to two. This from before was 10 over 32. This from before was 26 over 32. And now my new number then is 10 over 26. And so I can compute that my new PMF looks like this, 10 over 26, 10 over 26, five over 26, one over 26, right? So here, this is still a PMF, it satisfies all the properties we had before, for example, all of the values have to add up to one. 
And it's kind of like the before and after, right? So I've shifted the probability of mass around given this new information about the event. So just to say what I mentioned more formally, that's like saying, um, you know, the axioms still apply. That is, after I condition on the event, I still have to have the probabilities all have to be non-negative, right? I still have to have that the sum of the possible outcomes all have to add up to one. And then I still have the total probability theorem, which says that if I have a partition then I can express the overall probability as the sum over all of these um, subclasses times the probability of each thing, right? So these three things together basically are most of what you need to know about conditional probability. Um, and so we're going to do some more examples in a second, and we're going to talk about the concept of conditional expected value.